folks, we're back, and so is Doctor Who. I'm your host, Raniac, and I'm joined by the usual cast of suspects. The Macro Terror was underrated. Turn it be, Doctor Who's back, and so are we. Yes, they, they, possibly. Cameron Miss Piggy 2016. Okay, yeah, Freezing Inferno, because they didn't actually introduce themselves. Freezing Inferno, Kachiri, and Cat are here. And we're here to talk about the series opener for Season 9, The Magician's Apprentice. And everything before that that is not Season 8. Yes, the prologue and the prequel. I didn't watch either of that, so I'll let you all talk about it. Okay, well, there's very little to actually know, but we will talk about it. So the prologue is basically a, a one-and-a-half-minute clip <laughs> of the Doctor on Khan talking with Ohila, or Ohila, played by Claire Higgins. She's in the episode as well. She's the lead... Is that the same lady who was in Night of the Dark? Yes. Okay. And they're just having a conversation about, as we find out later, somebody the Doctor has wronged in the past, and uh, you are you are embarking on, a, on an enterprise that will lead to your own destruction. Yada yada yada. It's, it's pretty vague, and of course now it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the preview, which was the Doctor's meditation, which Kachiri was going to go and see, but had to pull out, unfortunately. Uh, not the first time. Um... Yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> no, but ignoring it's, it, that, uh, you said in uh, a... theaters throughout um, the US, I'm assuming the UK too, they had uh, the 3D version of season 8's finale, the two part finale. We didn't get that. And, and, oh, you guys didn't get that over there? Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's weird. No, they, re uh -huh. they, released, they released the prequel uh, for free on Facebook. Ah, okay. But see, if you went to the theater and watched it, they had an uh, eight-minute uh, prequel to this episode that we're about ready to talk about. Basically, the doctor is trying to meditate, but he has a severe case of ADHD. And he keeps on doing random things to keep himself away from actually meditating. Yes. Like, dig a well, you know. And this whole time, he's uh, with... Uh, Guy named uh, Bors or Hors? Bors? Bors. Bors, yeah. And uh, Bors is like his companion in the episode, and he keeps on telling him, You said you was going to meditate. Oh, but have I shown you this magic trick? You know, that, yeah. that kind of stuff. He can't do it. Yeah, never he just do can't do it. Do what Please. again? The, never, the... Do, never do that actually. Oh, so, so you want me to do my uh, Capaldi? Okay. No. No, she, she said don't do it again, but... Uh... No. I want you to do your Capaldi like I want a third-degree burn on my vagina. Wow! Kinky. Okay. I think there's um... no one response to that. Hang on. I think there's no one response to what Kat just said. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't, don't play it again. God damn it, phone. Uh... <laughs> 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 but... At the end of it, uh, Boar's asking him, why aren't you just meditating? And, you know, Doctor tells him, well, because, you know, I'm going to die in this upcoming war. And it ends on this, like, over, like, shot cast of people running through this, like, muddy field, which is the opening shot of the Season 9 opener. Yeah, it segues straight into it. And honestly, if you didn't see the prologue or the prequel, you didn't miss too much, because it was pretty much referencing the episode itself. Yeah. The, the prequel does explain who Bors is a bit more, so you might be wondering who this big guy with the axe was. <laughs> if you just watched the episode, but you, you didn't miss too much out of it. And that's probably why they, they just released it for free rather than charge for it in this country. I know. Fucking US. But then Maybe we, you know. but then we did have get... to pay for more Doctor Who. You have my sympathy, but not really. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we go straight in then into the episode, and boy, this introduction. Oh, Holy man. crap, this introduction. Oh, man. Like, so, everybody was worried about uh, the chick from uh, Game of Thrones and ham-faced guy, but no, <laughs> no. No, none of them. We have to worry about the fucking kid. It's, it's classic Moffat misdirection, and I love it. Ah, oh. he releases clips of the of the um of the of the new villain who we'll get to later on. That he releases clips of the new villain, release clips of uh, of Maisie Williams' character, who we still don't know who that is. And you think, oh, these are the big two mysterious characters for this season. Mm -hmm. Nope, child in the battlefield. Yep. What's her name, boy? Travis. Davros. 
<laughs> Javros? He's not a coffee bean, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you had me have uh, dropping the first F-bomb with this review, you win the pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that was me, I did that earlier. So. It was me. You don't win the pool, sorry about your luck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well fuck, damn it, I had Radiant <laughs> down. Fuck! <laughs> okay. Shit! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if that's Motherfuckers! What... <laughs> oh. Can you okay, imagine if that's what Fresno... Now we are cursing. Can you imagine if that's what Fresno came Fuck. back to? It was what he came back to. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> so the hand mines then. What a good concept. Oh, oh okay. I, I'm sorry. I had to duck out for a bit. We, were we talking about the intro? We're talking about the yes. intro and the, and the hand mines. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't. You've got a story really about the hand mines, haven't you? Uh, not really. Look, can I mention the clam drones? Uh, are we at that point yet? Uh, it's about the start of the episode, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, go on, go on. Okay, so there's a line in the intro where, like, uh, someone mentions the clam drones, and, uh, well, have, have we gotten to the twist yet of the thing? Yep. Of where the yeah, because Shiri messed it up because he called him Javros. Oh, okay. So I he tried to do a Briss action and say Davros. Oh, How does a okay. D become a J? We told you not to do that. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, bas so basically, Kachiri let the cat out of the bag. Okay, so I... I just spoiled the, the... Hi. Okay, so clam drones are a thing that was mentioned in The Magician's Apprentice and in Genesis of the Daleks, which took place on Scarrow during the Dalek Khaled Thal War and the Do Rise of the Daleks, blah, blah, blah. There is a silly giant clam that menaces one of the Doctor's companions, I think, at some point in the episode. So clam drones could be a reference to that. And, and, and also in that episode, uh, the Doctor accidentally nearly steps on a landmine, which is, you know, an actual landmine. There aren't any, like, Pan's Labyrinth hands with eyes that come out of the ground and grab Harry Sullivan's leg or anything. That's purely Moffat deciding that he's going to make the streets of London run yellow with the piss of children again, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say those things are creepy. Great concept, oh, though. They creeped up my uncle. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's like, they were perfectly designed to. They're pale, they're dirty, you can't see anything. The, the eye... The eye is very dull. Oh, yeah, the eye. Yeah, they, they the are very eye. dull at, like... Yeah. Like, I kind of was like, man, those eyes look familiar. And then, you know, the second the kid says name, I'm like, Re oh, they're on Scarrow. Really? I, really? I pegged it. Oh, like, but they're not on Scarrow. I half pegged it. They're not on Scarrow, though. No, that that no. war was on Scarrow? I thought that war was on Scarrow. Was no, it? No, no. I'm with Kuchiri. That that definitely has to be Scarrow, because the, it's obviously the Khaled Thal War. Oh, my God. That's a Khaled Thal item. You're with Kuchiri. If, like, uh, Davros created the Daleks, he would have to have something to make them from. So if he uh, used, like, the natural fauna as i put it in giant um, air quotes if I, I i can answer this since i'm the only fucker here who's actually seen genesis of the daleks the daleks <laughs> the daleks are mutated versions of da of davros's own species the collins who were humanoid originally yeah but then they were mutated to survive the nuclear radiation of their thousand year war with the thals and they stuck the blobs into tanks and removed all the emotion and made them hate machines that exterminate everyone which, again, is referenced later in the episode by the Doctor himself. Oh, yes. And, uh, incidentally, yeah, I, I half-pegged that it was Scarrow when the guy shot a bow and arrow at the plane, because there is an offhand line about that, the Doctor musing about how the war has regressed through technology in Genesis of the Daleks. So that's a clue for people. This is why I'm glad you, you're here for this, <coughs> because I never would have picked that up. Well, you know how you, know how you can pick up more of this stuff? Oh, Start no. watching more Classic Who! Oh, God. Oh. I've got one twin dilemma. No. Uh, yeah, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this I I get a feeling that this episode was really based off of a Doctor Four episode. If you, it totally like, was. This, it's yeah, taken it was, off that bit of dialogue where it goes if it, it's even quoted in the episode. If you if someone pointed out to you a child and told you that child would become totally evil, could you kill that child? Oh, we we're go I'm gonna have a talk about that later, but let's uh, move on with your topic. Yeah. Well, one more thing to mention about the intro, um, this is something that I, I didn't notice until I, I watched it, but this was actually spoiled by the Daily Mirror. Hmm. <laughs> they got the whole thing about, oh, Dots that's, is going to... That's funny, because uh, in my Series 8 revisiting, uh, I made a whole big deal about mirror symbolism. <laughs> it's also funny, because the Daily Mirror almost never gets anything right with Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually have done. And the one time they do, they ruin it for everybody. So, so funnily enough, my my usual joke about taking it with a truckload of salt uh, doesn't work this time. 
Oops. The salt is dumped on me, if anything. So what did the Daily Mirror get right? Uh, that it was going to be a child in a war, and that child was going to be Devros. Devros. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Javros. Javros, yes. That's yes, his new name is. Yeah, that, that, that's his new name from here on in. But um, <laughs> the reveal of Kid Devros was just one shocker in an episode of Shockers. Ah, my jaw dropped. Oh, it's... <sighs> I, had, I had the standard reaction. Wait, he said what? No. Jaw dropped. Can't be. I, I kind of went like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And I was like, it can't be that Davros. Well, I, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't say, oh, fuck, because uh, I had company. Can I raise a little point here, just quickly? Yep. Big Finish has done a, like, I think a four-part audio series or something. A, a whole bunch of audios about Davros's past called I, Davros. So I don't know how this gels with that, as far as Scott <clears throat> Rudy's concerned. Like, if they mi mix and match. So... Uh, it doesn't really matter either way, because continuity and Doctor Who, what's that? The <laughs> interesting thought experiment. Yeah. But as I say, there, there were several different shockers throughout the episode went on, but all of it kind of, apart from one, of course, bounced off the Doctor, and that's who we're going to talk about now. He was pretty damn good, was Peter Capaldi <laughs> in this one. Oh, yes. I can say. Well, when we first see him after the intro, well, he's, he's obviously shocked and frightened and appalled at what the f hell he's blundered into in the intro. But then then when we next see him, he's in the Renaissance, riding a tank into an arena, playing electric guitar with sunglasses. Wait, on. wait, the, the Renaissance? No, 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 he's in the 1100s. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he uh, he's in 1138. Okay. okay. You're That's getting nice. confused because he mentioned, he says, I'm a Renaissance dude in that whole exchange. Okay, that is medieval. Wh wherever the hell he is, he's riding in on a tank playing electric <laughs> electric guitar, which sounds suspiciously like the Doctor Who theme. It, it and he's wearing Patrick Troughton's dance. Which I never spotted. Yeah, and, 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 he and, and he has also Patrick Troughton's hair. Oh my god. <laughs> it makes me wonder how the heck you could have recognized his pants. Of all his hair was also Patrick it, Troughton. It's, it's freezing inferno, cat. <laughs> I, I know Patrick Jordan's pants. He, he also makes re he also made reference to a wearing a bow tie and a long scarf. So I guess this was just him trying on all his old outfits. One shudders to imagine Peter Capaldi wearing the coat. Oh God! Oh, that's all I want now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we no, have a Stephen Moffat? That? If you're hearing this, please don't write that. No, one should be saddled yeah. with the coat. No, I'll, Colin I'm Baker should be Kickstarter. With We're going to make the Doctor wear the, the coat. Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be Indiegogo. <laughs> Jesus, get out of here with that. Fiverr, if you give me five bucks, then I'll make sure the doctor gets. Anyway, Renia, what did you think of Peter Capaldi in this one? I think he acted his socks off. Oh yes. <clears throat> I really do. I, he went through such a wide range of emotions. I mean, even in that one opening scene, he goes from sort of jubilation, I'm gonna save the child, and then uh, tell me who's not going to die today, and then when the, the word Davros hits. I think he mirrored most of the audience. <laughs> mirrored. Uh, All right. Just his you... face falling and his realization of who it is. Yeah. Uh, this man, this man has to be one of the best doctors I've seen yet, of the new doctors, that is. It's almost like he goes like the, through the five stages of grief in one episode, almost. And it's, he it's does. Funny. Like, deny. he's denying it, and then... Denial, runs... bargaining, so... acceptance. Yeah. And at the very end, he accepts it. Although I think acceptance is more going to happen in the next episode, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, actually, we might be, we might begin to acceptance later. Yeah, mm. we we're kind of skipping a part with Clara here. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason for that. But uh, the, going back <laughs> to the tank entrance, uh, Stephen Moffat has described it before the episode aired as his most outrageous entrance to date. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. It's guess. it's hard not to agree with that. It's it's bombastic and it's ridiculous. He's on a tank in the Middle Ages. Playing the Doctor Who theme on the guitar. It's beautiful. And making right. jokes about fish. And <laughs> fish. And wearing Patrick Trotton's pants. Yeah, we we get it with the pants. God damn it. It's very important he's wearing Patrick Trotton's pants. Although oh one thing goodness. I will say about the Doctor, he wasn't in the episode that much. Not really, no. Compared to normal. Yeah. That's probably why I th I've said this in our chat earlier. I feel like yeah, I know this is two part, but I feel like this was twenty minutes of one episode. Oh, here we go. 
<laughs> 20 minutes, huh? Uh, I'll go back on to more of that later on with why I think that. Oh, wonderful. But... So it's going to be hanging over our heads for the rest of the review. Because, well, the thing is, we haven't talked about the planes yet. We haven't talked about Missy. We haven't talked about yeah. Clara. Yes, we're getting we're to We're getting to all that when we talk about Missy and Clara. Yeah. Well, well. Anyone else got anything to add about the Doctor? Because I think we pretty much covered it. Uh, uh, Peter Capaldi can really play the guitar. Yeah, that was genuinely him. Mm-hmm. That was pretty awesome. I thought, no, he's obviously just miming it and, and someone else is playing it off stage and they're just making it look it's him. No, it was confirmed the back, back behind the scenes uh, video they did on YouTube. Really him. Mm-hmm. Was it a real tank or like a prop, though? I don't know about if it was a real tank or not. I, I think they wouldn't get away with a real tank. I think it would be tank. too heavy if it was a real tank, so... Probably yes. Not. Yes, I, I think you're probably right. But he wasn't he wasn't in a band at one point, apparently, Peter Capaldi, so that's probably why he's so good. He's oh. like Christopher Lee. And he's really but good. But alive. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, I miss that guy so much. Mm. We love you, Christopher Lee. Yeah, rest in peace, buddy. Anyway... Trying to move on from the somber tone there. Uh, he played a couple of songs on the uh, on the old guitar. You've mentioned the Doctor Who theme, I think, already. Mm-hmm. But also Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison and, of course, Mickey. Hey, uh, Mickey. Or, hey, Missy. Yeah, you, you gotta say it right. Oh, yes, people are gonna be like, Mickey, what? Is the name of the song is Mickey. Hmm. I'm Not, always knowing it as Hey, Mickey. Yeah, so. but it's, it's Mickey. That's an answer. By Tony Basil. You're wrong because I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. She's about ready to declare war on you. It wouldn't be the first time. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm Canadian. We burned your White House down, so suck it. <laughs> you burned our White House down, then you Maximum sex. Right. right, moving on. <laughs> this time. You win this time, Canada. <laughs> moving on to uh, another major character then, Clara. Yay. <clears throat> Clara is uh, interesting this episode. I, 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 I have been watch, re-watching Series 8 and writing it, as I said, so I've, I've gone on this whole goddamn tangent about how Clara became sort of a dark mirror of the Doctor. Like, you know, flatline with the lying and all that. Now here, she's sort of like the Doctor when the Doctor's not around, because she's sort of taking that role, using what she's learned, to helping unit out and figuring out what the hell the planes are doing, and then uh, talking with... Missy, who we'll get to in a bit, and notably, if if I can go into a little Missy tangent, when Missy starts vaporizing people, <laughs> she's the one who takes charge and tells Missy to c- settle the hell down and actually figure out what they're supposed to do about the. I doctor. love that scene so much. Oh yeah, oh. So I it, it's, am not good. <laughs> oh yeah, but that is uh, Clara, as she has done so often in series eight, taking charge of things, being very doctor-like and handling the situation and piloting it in the correct direction. So that's good. I will say I like Clara as a character. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's fun. She's able to take charge, like you said. I just think she's overstayed her welcome a bit. Mm. Yeah. She's been here a little too long. I can't really argue with that. Well, not anymore, am I right? (laughs) This is one of the problems that I had back with Rose and then her ridiculous eyebrows. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have an issue where her eyebrows are not dyed like her hair is. Okay, okay. But, but um, issue. she just stayed too long, in my opinion. Well, Rose is only two seasons. It gets, it gets stagnant, and it's just like, we're done. Can you? I, I think Rose this? was around for just about the right time, but I guess I can see where you're. Amy was around longer, though. Yeah. Yeah, Amy also got very old <laughs> for me. Also, there's an interesting bit. In, in the middle of the episode when Clara calls the doctor out for lying about Missy, which is kind of funny considering that Clara through Series 8 was lying through her teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> but no, I, I thought Clara was was very interesting in this one. Her character just continues to develop and evolve. Mm-hmm. She's more assertive and confident than we've ever seen her before. Yeah. Which, but of course... She, she's not fun. I don't, she's not as fun as she used to, like... I liked how fun she was in, in the snowman well, gee, episode. Could it be because her boyfriend got brutally killed? Which well, I have well. to say, kudos to them both when Missy uh, brought that up. Oh yeah, yeah. To Clara. Was, How's that your was boyfriend? Great. Still dead. Still, still outrageously dead. dead. Outrageously dead. Uh, still dead, yeah. 
and, and, that, and that the missing and Clara thing is interesting because I again I, I I wrote about this. I I'm just in my own default mode here, but uh, <clears throat> Clara became sort of a mirror of the Doctor in Series Eight, but we realized it was all set up by Missy, who you know in as the Master, is the original Dark Mirror of the Doctor in at least four incarnations. Anthony Ainley, not really a dark mirror, Peter Davis or nothing, but Delgado, and uh, John Sim, Michelle Gomez, and that other guy I can't quite remember. Uh, Eric Roberts. Roberts. <laughs> yes. Eric Roberts yeah, is actually it's, a it's weird dark mirror. It's good to forget Eric fan. Roberts. Everyone in America does too. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Eric Roberts? <laughs> uh, Eric, uh, Eric Roberts is the master in the Doctor Who TV movie. Oh. You're not and missing anything. You is are. it the ninth Doctor TV movie? Eighth. Eighth, eighth. Doctor. Eighth you, Doctor, you, right. You really are not missing much, trust me. See, this is why I come on with these guys, because they remember everything that I don't. It's a, it's a damn everything. shame. That's, that's Paul McGann's only mainstream performance as the Doctor. Well, ninth of the Doctor. Is that mainstream, though? Because that was a mini-zode. It's on, I got it on a DVD, so... Okay, yeah, yeah fair enough. Okay, so that's all i got to say about that. Anyone else? Clara? Or should we move on? Uh, well, one thing about Clara is I mentioned she's assertive and, and confident. Even Unit takes a bet seat to her in this episode. Well, yeah, she, she's the closest person to the Doctor, so they basically... She's sort of like uh, Martha. a sort of good Doctor, almost. No, she's... Uh, Martha did the same thing, and I'm assuming mm. some of the old companions did, too. Can I just point out, though, something quickly? Unit's getting more and more useless as, as time goes on. You, you ain't you ain't seen the old Unit. True, like, but just going off the modern series. I mean, there's a reason why one of the Brigadier's famous lines in, in one of the later episodes is, Just once, I'd like to meet an alien menace that wasn't immune to bullets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the break. Oh. Some, that's something that's always gone to me. It's like you have unit which is supposed to help and defend the Earth from alien threats, and yet they always, you know, give command to this person who just happens to know the Doctor, because they're a Doctor expert. It's and like that's not, that's why Torchwood was created. Smart. They're not, you know, a technical whiz. They're just a normal average person who happened to go around with the Doctor. I'm. I mean, that, I reckon we're going to see units again later on in the series. That's not a spoiler. That's just my opinion. That's just my. Uh, intuition that we'll see them again, but Kate seemed right. completely out of sorts. Mm. But it probably, well, she did fall out of the plane, yeah. Yeah, they, they seemed a little more competent in Death and Heaven almost, because they had actually knew what was going on, whereas here they're just like, plans are stopped! Mm -hmm. Well, 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 you said they were competent, but they allowed Missy to get out. Well, yeah, but... They were right there! They could have shot her! Mm. Uh, uh, you you heard what she said, you heard what she said how to, you had to kill her. With bullets. You know, take the chest in the head before I regenerate. Yeah, That's I, true. I understand what Rainiac's saying. It's like Missy basically teleported away from her handcuffs and knocked those guys out. They didn't even fucking move. I, I she shot that. the two guys. They didn't even move. Maybe she had them hypnotized already. That's, Maybe, that's yeah. I, that's I, all I got. I don't mind well, that. We're, ta we're not talking about We're <laughs> you know, not, no. But um, uh, the point is that Unit was wherever out of source. And even when, I sorry to go on to Missy, but when she's, she's disintegrating the bodyguards. <laughs> They don't even react. Hmm. Missy even comments in it. Oh, I'm glad to see you brought spares. <laughs> you do hear them yelling in the background and things. Yeah, saying. but they're not firing at her. It could have... Well, because you they're also waiting have for Clara's Kate. order. You also have Kate in the background. Say, saying, don't shoot like, don't her, fire, yeah. Don't fire. Plus, these are unit people. They must be trained in some part. Because, I mean, you don't see the Secret Service... Trained uh, to being expendable, you mean, I think. Wow. <laughs> Well, that's the unit. That's the unit in general. Well, here in America, that's what the Secret Service is. Yeah. They're basically a group of men who's, or in women. I don't know if there's actually women or not, but they're a group of people who their sole purpose is to take a bullet for the president. Yeah, no, they are women. They're they're a lady uh, Secret Service officers. Well, I don't know. I don't. I'm American. I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're you're in you're near the capital. You should know this. You're near. Yeah, this. I'm like an hour away from the capital. If... I don't even know. If you see Secret Service, you're too close. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's a pretty good point, actually. Okay. Yeah. One last thing to add about If Clara. you see Secret Service, you're too close. If you see Secret yeah, Service, they're going to put a bullet the in you. Guys were there for. They're Clara's Secret Service. If you see they the Secret Service, they're going to put a bullet they in even, you. They even escort her out of the limo, like. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can see where you're coming from here. One last thing about uh, Clara then. Her chemistry with uh, Peter Capaldi uh, still as evident as ever, but we don't get much of it. Yeah. But How there is a reason for that. With Missy? That's, yeah. That's interesting. Oh my gosh, that was the best. That's going to be interesting for later. <laughs> also, Clara confirmed to have made out with Jane Austen. Yes. <laughs> or stop it. Confirmed. The dialogue was so good in this episode. Anyway, we want to talk about it, don't we? So let's do it. Missy. Hey. <clears throat> oh, Missy. Hey, don't Missy. Don't I understand? <laughs> I think Cat wants to talk first about Missy, so go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Missy. That's it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said most of my stuff about Missy and Clara with the mirror talk, but what's interesting is Missy and the Doctor, because... They're really playing up the friendship angle. Like, they're saying their friendship is older than human civilization. And, well, it's kind of a fucked up friendship when you really think about it. It basically amounts to, a, well, in her, in her Roger Delgado incarnation, fucking around with the Doctor and trying to take over the That's Earth. That's by our terms, though. We don't really know what the Time Lord terms exactly. are. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, well, the so thing is, they're childhood friends, and one of them just went insane. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. their story. Mm -hmm. But they're still friends. They've always been friends, even when they've been trying to kill each other. That's the whole point. That's yeah, why. Yeah. That's why Tenet guts was fucking destroyed. Whenever the master decided to not regenerate. That's the tragedy of the, of the whole character of the master. Yep. Is but it? I will say, Missy was so much fun in this episode. Oh, wasn't she, though? Oh, yes. Her coming in where she used the Hey Missy line, uh, her talking with Clara where she's like, you go, girl, The tele after teleporting to where the doctor is, and she's like all loopy. Oh, I love Missy so much. Yeah, <laughs> she, she said like five things in a row, one of them being, I've known the doctor since he was a little girl. One of them was, was a lie. Guess which one? <laughs> <laughs> I, the fandom exploded on that, by the way. Oh, so yeah, I, I, I didn't catch that line on first trans, on first viewing. I only caught it on second viewing. But yeah, it's something like, since he kissed the president's wife ever since, since he was a little girl. One of those three was a lie. Can you guess which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that sure is a thing. She is bonkers as ever, but thank goodness for that. But the I thing is, it felt like... She sticks around for a long time. Even though she was evil for the first part, it felt like she took the role of the Doctor for the first. Yeah, like, that, that, of... that 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 observation's been made. She's in this episode. She's basically the Doctor, except she also kills people for shits and giggles. She's a surrogate Doctor, kind of. Yeah, she's the yeah. anti-Doctor. Yeah, she she but does become an anti-hero. She's the dark mirror of the Doctor. She's a, she's not a villain in this one so much as an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. It's because like, I love that she, so much. She wants help, but it's clear that she also wants to fuck with people. So, like, the whole airlock scene, like, I guess I'm going to kill you today. And opens the airlock. Yeah. Today <laughs> might be the day well, that I kill you. <laughs> oh, man. And her dancing out in space. Oh, good grief. <laughs> She's just having so much fun with this, and I love to see that. And even Clara, towards the end, just before the, the Scarrow is revealed, is having fun as well. Yeah, she's like, okay, this person kills people, but you know what? I like her. She's fun. Which is strange, she considering she killed her boyfriend. boyfriend. <laughs> yes. And, and, and you know you know what's really great, though, with Missy? She's got a range, too. She's all playful and doctorish, except Thomas Idol when she's playing around. But as soon as she pegs that they're on Scarrow, she suddenly gets very, very fearful. Oh, her reaction was pitch perfect there. Yeah. It takes an awful lot to frighten the master, but being on the planet of the Daleks, that'll just about do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially I mean, since I mean, the last time that the master and Daleks were together, the Daleks was trying to execute her. Yeah. And then yeah, they did it. Yeah, no. That, this is totally the uh, backstory to the Eric Roberts TV movie. Yeah. The Daleks execute the master, and then the master becomes like a weird ghost snake and possesses Eric Roberts and takes over his body. What? Yeah, and then he tries to uh, trap the Doctor and seal off his regenerations. Yes. Also, I, I think Missy... Yeah, I think Missy had the line of the entire episode. Yeah. Wait, hang on a minute. Devros is your actual enemy now? I'll scratch his eye out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you got anything... You two got anything to add about Missy? Um, we all know that she's not dead. 
Is it clear that she's oh, definitely okay. not dead? Oh, it's okay, totally okay, clear. Okay, okay. We'll get to that when we talk about the cliffhanger. But... but but can I just say one thing, though? Did any of us seriously think that she was dead in, at, oh. at the end of Death in Heaven? My parents did. No. no. Good, good, good. Because that's seriously. I, I, I think Especially since like a week after Death in Heaven came out, there was a video for Ian a pair. Yeah. <laughs> there, you, there you go. No one seriously thinks that she died in Death in Heaven, and no one seriously thinks, well, we'll get to that. I don't well, think they do. But the, the, I, I do have... Well, I won't. I, don't think I hope I not. Let's put it that way. Because cause you, you don't want me to spoil that thing I mentioned. No. About no, 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 so no. I, I, won't, I won't mention that here. If, Hold your if, tongue for another ten weeks if you can possibly do that. If, if you want to know, and you don't care about uh, spoilers for, like, casting decisions... Here's you a check that, look. You can check that nice. You can check those nice words that Rainiac most likely linked in the description that I wrote. <laughs> and I make this point. And, I'm and now dead. he'll be sending me like five Skype messages. Why haven't you linked it yet? Why haven't you linked it yet? Go ahead and link it yet. <laughs> okay. Well, let's you move on. Here. Yeah, I, I think we've talked enough about Missy, but so good. Oh. Okay. And it would be the best performance of the entire episode. If not for... One man, and we'll talk about the villains in in general, but um, they kind of shared top villain here. The Daleks mm -hmm. and Davros. Mm. Oh, this episode was amazing. It's yeah. It's really good. Uh. What, what, I what I particularly like about Davros is, well... He had the sonic screwdriver for all that time, ever since he was a child. Hundreds of years, maybe. I don't know how long. Um, I'm assuming what's going on. What what's going on was because it's uh, Capaldi that left the child there. It re it did a tiny rewrite in history, and yeah. future Davros yeah. just randomly got the screwdriver out of the middle of nowhere. Oh my God! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, guys! This is Davros post Journey's End, right? Uh, yeah. Assuming so. And we, yes. and we see him. Technically, die at the end of the episode. Yep. What if the only reason he's alive now is because he's got the sonnet from the doctor? Well, oh. I'll be God. That that'd be something. That'd be a twist. But I, what, wonder, what was, I what, wonder if they, sh they they if they're going to show like what happened between those two points, or if they're just I, going. To I highly doubt they will. I mean, they, they don't usually do that stuff. They didn't explain how Missy survived the thing, for instance, or whatnot. Uh, they they might do that the next episode if what I'm thinking. Is almost oh, my my point is does Davros having a sonic screwdriver improve the Daleks any and his creation of them? Well, I'm thinking, what if he like tried to figure out how the sonic worked and he used the technology that he found in it in order to make the you know the chassis for the Daleks? The oh my that's, god! That's what, that's what I'm saying. What what if Capaldi giving him the screwdriver did some causality loop with helping him create the Daleks? That would be incredible. That would be incredible. And uh, uh, what else did I have to say about uh, Davros? I don't know. Like, uh, oh, he yeah, oh, was really good in this episode. Oh, oh yeah, and, and, and he played back a lot of old Who clips of the Doctor confronting Davros, including one of my favorite lines from Remembrance of the Daleks, the unlimited rice pudding bit. Yes. <laughs> yes, beautiful. But he, but the most interesting is when you mentioned it earlier. He plays back Tom Baker talking, debating about whether or not he should destroy the Daleks, and doing that speech about if you saw a child and someone pointed out to you that that child would grow up be totally evil, could you then kill that child? Now Tom Baker in that episode obviously meant it as a thing that no, I cannot destroy the Daleks because I don't have the right to do that. And in later incarnations. Either, yeah, he the seventh doc times. either the Seventh Doctor or the War Doctor, depending on how you look at it, he dis he flip flops on that. He does have the right. He does destroy Scarrow and all the Daleks. It, it's but sort of now, the same question that plagues all time travelers and time travel mm -hmm. stories, really, because it's like yeah. we can go back Hitler? and we can fix all this. We can kill Hitler, but the problem mm -hmm. is Hitler did a lot more than just you know kill billions of Jews and gypsies and handicapped people. He, most, you know, he helped bring, most mess uh, today was because of his slump. Mm -hmm. So it's like there was so much more to changing one event than most people think about. Yeah, and this and, is definitely one of those uh, examples. Yeah, and in the Genesis of the Daleks, one of the reasons the Doctor cites for not being able to destroy the Daleks is that so many people will ally together and 
work together because of the Daleks. So he'd be undoing all of that good by yeah. destroying. Plus but the now, fact as, that if the Daleks did something that also helped influence the future, like they accidentally killed one of the worst people who was going to be. Mm. Well, you if never... the Daleks don't exist, the Thals win the Thousand Year War for a start. Mm. And who said the Thals wouldn't be worse than the Daleks? No, the Thals are just Ziggy Stardust people. They don't even <laughs> do anything. Yes, but in the new timeline that will be created, if the Daleks didn't exist, who's to say they wouldn't evolve into the worst warmongers ever seen? That's true. Uh, but here's, here's the thing. Tom Baker said that he didn't have the right to kill that child, but now Capaldi has flip-flopped on that. And he knows. It's, it's, it's sort of a comic to Into the Dalek, where Rusty looks into the Doctor's soul and sees hatred. It's that that's driving the Doctor right now and abandoning the little Davros. Yeah. Two and great performances for both versions of Davros. The little kid actually did very well. That's yes. Really See? Mm. You can get good child actors. Oh, mm. It's crap. not hard. <laughs> I, I forget his name, but he actually did really well. It's Joey. Joey. And, Joey yeah, Joey. Price. Thank you. Uh, well, Thank you. kudos, Joey. You, you did you did good. Yeah. But Julian Bleach. Of course. My God. Wonderful. He was born to play this role. No offense to Terry Malloy fans, but he was born to play Davros with Julian Bleach. Well, what about Michael Wisher fans? And, How dare you? Sorry, I've forgotten about him. But um, I love how different Davros is in this episode to Journey's End. Mm -hmm. His last appearance, because in Jenny's end, he is insane, pretty much. He's a supervillain. Yep. And here, he's more introspective. He's dying. He doesn't, he doesn't and yeah, care. as he shows at the end, he's still cunning and still ruthless as he ever was. It's funny, because it's, it's still the exact same person playing him, and yet you see these two very different uh, versions of acting from him. That's because Julian Bleach is a fantastic actor. Mm-hmm. And kudos to the BBC for keeping his return a complete secret, by the way. Because usually that would leak out straight away. You know, unlike uh, the Cybermen from the previous season. Mm. Well, that wasn't a leak, because they showed that in a trailer. Well, it's I don't care, they still shouldn't have put that out. No, they shouldn't have. I completely agree with you, they shouldn't have. But they and did. They also, they, and there was also reports whenever they were filming. Like, everyone flipped out because they were filming... Um, uh, you know, Missy and the Master, uh, no, Missy and uh, the Doctor, and like all these Cybermen walking down. So yeah, that everyone knew that was going to happen. So, but oh. they managed to keep um, Julian Bleach and Devros a complete secret. So kudos to them for that. And I got yep. chills with his speech at the end. Oh yeah, he, he's not even in control of the Daleks anymore. He's just like, well, kids will be kids. Let me hear you say this just once: compassion is wrong. Yeah. Holy shit. And, and that line that of the Doctor's, why if I ever let you live. Yeah. Sums up everything, doesn't it? Yep. Why did he? Because and will he? And will he? That's the question. Because for the longest time, he didn't think he had that right. But now things have changed. He may have it, or he may believe that he has it. Yeah. Mm, that's, that's... We also have the return of the Daleks, of course. No, well, they're Daleks. It is Scaro. Yeah, yeah. I Are love that talk? reveal. Are we going to... Okay, yeah. Um, now, I don't know what the hell's going up with this. Is this, is it actually Scaro free from the Time War? Or is it just new Scaro that they recolonize? I have no clue what it is. Was Scaro in the Time War, or was that just Gallifrey? Oh, no, Scaro was, it was gone before the Time War. <clears throat> okay. Because, well, yeah, it's, it's the, trying to piece together what happened to Scaro is really weird, because... The Seventh Doctor blew it up in Remembrance of the... Well, he didn't blow it up. He tricked Davros into blowing it up in Remembrance of the Daleks. But then some of the novels sort of retconned it back into existence because they didn't like that. So it's probably, maybe, still around for the Time War. And would, the, would, gets blown would it be created by the Second Big Bang? I... Ooh. That's, that's a good point. Could I be. don't know, though, because if it was already gone in that universe, <clears throat> yeah. it wouldn't come back. No, we don't know. No, I mean, the whole point of the Big Bang was that everything that was restored to the moment that the cracks started appearing. <clears throat> so, I'm not sure if this is Time War business, or they just colonized a new Scaro, or whatever. But no, what? well, I hope it's a new Scaro, because the old Scaro used to be highly radioactive, and it made uh, his human companions sick. Oh, man, you're, you're really dropping the knowledge. Yeah. You're, talk you're talking about William Hartnell. <laughs> Shit, now. 
He's right, though. Yeah, because, I mean, all that Missy saw was a bunch of buildings, and she immediately identified it as Scaro. However, she was they were, like, in a deserty area, weren't they? No, but, but that's what Scaro was. It's probably a little hard. Scaro yeah. was basically, like, just death. Scaro was just, like, a big rock. Yeah, but I'm saying it's probably a little hard to identify one desert from another. Scaro was a wasteland. It is. So that was also a wasteland, and with some Dalek buildings. So... It's 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 up in the air right now. I'm not. I don't know for sure, but I I would buy that it was it is Scarrow back from the time war, and the Moffat has an explanation for it. I would buy that it's new Scarrow. It doesn't really matter. We have a whole Scarrow's episode back. to to possibly have that explained. Mm -hmm. So let's not go. Oh, plot hole, plot hole, just yet. How dare how, how dare you not explain everything, Stephen Moffat? You you fucking hack. <laughs> yeah, everything needs to be laid out in part one. What the hell is part two for? <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, like I said before, even though, you know, this is a planet returning, I would still expect that from Doctor Who, just because of all the other stuff we've gone through. Yeah, that's true. And even Missy said they brought, they built it again, they brought it back. No. I don't know. Well, so even it's... she's come up with, with possible theories in her own head mm. for what's should, happened. Should, so should we be talking about the uh, climax of this episode? Almost. We've got a couple of characters. I, I was just wanting to mention the Daleks, because I think... They're oh, yeah, we haven't all. even talked about... the, the, the Ham face, ham face, ham we'll, face. We'll, we'll get to ham face in a moment, but the Daleks were back on top form here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because they had, what, three minutes of screen time total? And they were still Oh, great. that, and you also found out Boars was uh, a fucking... Uh, Dalek Dalek that Spider was a huge surprise. Mm -hmm. and I, I, have a, I, I have a complaint about that, though. What? Go oh, ahead. Dear. Um... <laughs> Why send uh, Snake Man out to go look for the Doctor if you already had one of your eye stock guys? Because ah, they wanted it. to start, no. separate the Doctor no, I can from explain the that. I can explain that. Go on. Balls was not a Dalek, human Dalek, Dalek puppet until after he was bitten by the snake. Oh, wow. That too. News in continuity from a sign of the Daleks where they don't immediately revert to Dalek puppet form after they're converted. And also, notably, we don't really see Boars after Snakeman shows up. No, and his expression changes. Well, it goes from sort of like panicky, panicky, and all of a sudden, stern face, find the TARDIS, inform High Command. So there you go. Well, I'll I mean, be what other dance. reason would the snake have to attack this random person next to the Doctor when the Doctor's yeah. right there? Well, well that done, is Rick. That, sense. That, is some, that is some very good plot hole filling. I, I like your style. I've taught you well. You're welcome. <laughs> but the, uh, the the Daleks did more in their three minutes of screen time than I think they've done in most of their Moffat era appearances combined. That's true. Well, I, there's no, there was none of that. Missy tried to bargain with them. She's like, you know, you need me, you need the TARDIS, we can use this, go all over time and space and kill everyone. Oh, you just thing. kill me! Exterminate! Bang! Maximum and, like, they, they didn't take any crap from her at all. They're just like, you know what? No, we're Daleks. Boom. But I think Missy plan for that, but we'll explain that when we get to the finale. Mm -hmm. uh, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, the different eras of Dalek, love that as well. The 60s Daleks, the uh, the new series Daleks, the Dalek Supreme is there, a special the weapons Dalek. Dalek. No! Excellent. No Excellent. Power Ranger Daleks. No, there was one. There was a scene where you saw one of the five. It's like the Dalek Parliament from Asylum of the Daleks, but done better. Thank you. No, no, no human Dalek hybrids. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see Dallas Sack. Why are you here? I thought you died. It just hurt um, his shoulders. Got better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he got better. <laughs> oh Jesus! Hi, Doctor Nick. Um, oh no, it's not Doctor Nick. It's Don, Don, he dies in that film. It's Doctor Mon Monroe. I screwed it up. Never mind. Oh, um, for God's sakes! Sorry. Hi, Doctor Mon Monroe. Anyway, we want to talk about the best new villain in quite some time, Colony Self. Really? Him face. Best new villain? Oh, he was pretty damn cool. He was I mean, cool, but all he did was, where is the doctor? You, you want to know what's really kind of interesting? It's half an old Doctor Who flashback. He says the doctor is acquired, which is kind of, it might be a reference to the William Hartnell story, The War Machines, which is really, really weird because this weird computer basically what wants the doctor, but instead of saying the doctor is acquired, it says Doctor Who is required. Yeah, because I they, have a special yeah. love for Hamface. Ham the way he moves, the way he talks, the way he's he the Mara's brother. You want the uh, Mara? You got him, sort of. 
<laughs> That's not quite. I forget right. what they're uh, see, called. One of you might know. Um, those little two-wheeled segways that are just. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That was about really bringing those up. Uh, the. That's how he got around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was totally thinking he has to be on one of those. That's why he was so tall. And then I, was, I, I was thinking, I why in the world is he walking like this? But then when he reveals what he is, it makes perfect sense as to why he's walking like that. That was a really good uh, effect for him, just gliding on the ground. I was like, what the hell's going on here? Like, he's a, <sighs> that he's, was so cool. You know, you know what's interesting about that guy, though? Is that we, we all pretty much assumed, oh, this here we go, it's another Moffat mystery. This guy's going to come up and he's going to be like, yes, the doctor is falling into my trap. Soon all the pieces will be in place. And then we play that game where for ten weeks we speculate on who the hell this guy is, make all our theories, and then the most obvious answer comes true and we all complain about how Moffat's hacked. But that didn't happen this time. He's just some snake asshole. He's the messenger. Yeah. He's the and then it turns out the villain all along was a tiny little child. He's, and people were even just... saying the state man, well, they didn't know it was a state man, said, that guy's Davros. Oh, for God's sakes. Like, I didn't think it was Davros. You thought it was the meddling monk, possibly. I thought it I, was... I, I, well, hey, now, to be fair, you asked me before we saw any of it, so I had to base the guest on, like, what he looked like. I thought he was maybe somebody who'd been stitched back together. I thought the lines were actually scars. Mm -hmm. Instead of snakes. Yeah. And not the, funny like thing is, the funny thing is, Rain, Couturier actually got it because yeah. he said, and I quote, <laughs> he's just some asshole Moffat pulled out his ass. No, no, I said ass fuck. Yeah, he's some yeah. ass fuck that Moffat <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for this quote. <laughs> Call me <laughs> white, right, damn it. Ten points to Couturier, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no here, here's the point I want to make. Well, I'm, I may be proven completely wrong when part two airs and ends with a shock cliffhanger, but so let's think back to the Series 6 opener, The Impossible Astronaut, which ten minutes in, they had a major series arc mystery with the Doctor being shot dead by The Impossible Astronaut, but we don't have any of that here. What we have is basically part one of a two-parter. There's no inkling of a huge series arc on the go. It's just an episode, and that... It is honestly really goddamn refreshing because as much as I do like the Stephen Moffat era, I, I don't like the shell game of trying to guess what the series arc is because I don't like playing that game. I'd rather the emotional aspects of the program, how, the character interaction, rather than just, hey, I wonder who the bad guy is this year. Yeah. I'm thinking that this is going to be, I think Missy is going to be in like every other, every episode. Sort of like how uh, one is one of the Doctor Three seasons went. I don't think every other episode. Oh, I yeah. think she will be in the series yeah, finale. You're, th you're thinking of the f you're thinking of Pertwee's second series, in which the Master was the villain in every episode. <laughs> yeah, but like I'm thinking, like I don't know, something to I, I'm getting like a feeling that you know she's going to be a companion this series. I I don't know. I, I doubt that. I, I got my doubts too, but we'll find out. Major but supporting I, character, I will, maybe, but not. I will be pleasantly surprised if part two ends and we don't have any inkling of like an ongoing big thing. Like I mentioned, someone saying everything is in order. Yeah. Or whatever. But something tells me Davros is not be is not going to make it past the next episode. I well, wouldn't say that. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know so much. It would honestly be refreshing if Moffat stopped playing puzzle box stuff, guess the villain, and just actually focused on telling some really great Doctor Who stories. I think that's why you love the Devros reveals, Shadow Devros reveals so much, because it happened in the first five minutes. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's it. We dispense with that. But, like, any other Moffat series that would sort of be slowly doled out over 11 weeks, like the Missy reveal, which, if you remember, I was pissed off at the Missy reveal yeah. because 11 weeks of puzzle boxing and cock teasing us, and it was just the most obvious answer. And actually, I, I owe you an apology for that because I was sort of like celebrating in that review, like, yeah, I called the master. I actually played back a couple of reviews while you were doing your uh, your Series 8 uh, retrospective, your, your rewatch. And yeah, in one yeah. of those, I actually say, please don't be the master. Yeah, well, well here's the thing. Dark Water, I was pissed off because of all this stuff. It just basically amounts to nothing. The only thing that saved it was that Michelle Gomez knocked it out of the fucking park. The emotional beat saved it. I didn't give a shit about the puzzle box aspect. Mm. You see what I'm getting at? 
yeah. But um, back to Sarth then. I'm sorry, I do think he's one of the cooler looking villains we had in some time. Original villains. Hey, I guess. He didn't really amount to much. I again, hope either. he isn't lost in the shuffle next week. Well, we'll find out. He does show up in the publicity shots. For next no, week. because they, they were making him look like the big main villain. Well, yeah, yeah, but this exactly. is for next week, not not this week. So, th there's Moffat hoodwinking us again, I guess. So. I, just <laughs> well hope done we reverse reverse. I just hope he doesn't turn out to be another Seb, where we think he's this new cool character, and then in the second part he's just killed off. Permission to squeeze! Yeah, Alright, that was a great way to be killed off, but still. And I uh. love the scenes where he's travelling to different locations, like the Maldivarium, the Shadow Proclamation... Calm. Here, here, here's a nitpick I could have. What Davros knows that the Doctor loves Earth, so if he was looking for the Doctor, why didn't he immediately say, hey, Colin Nisarf, go to Earth. Go to find some Earth. Because if the doctor, doctor knows that he's dying, and he mm -hmm. knows that someone's after him, where would you not go? Uh, where you going well, to be he found? Did, what, but he did go to Earth. Yes, but that was Devil's logic. Think, well, he's not going to be at Earth originally because that's where I, he expect me yeah, okay. to find that, him. Yeah, it wasn't a serious nitpick. That's just something I was no. kind of wondering. It could also okay. be the fact that Earth is, you know, there's not really the same kind of stuff that you'll find on other planets. The Shadow Proclamation, uh, every place else that he went to, he was almost kind of normal just because there was so, such a diverse amount of aliens there. If he tried uh, to go on Earth, people would be like, okay, what, no, um, sorry, what? What the fuck is Who this? Are, what? What are you? Did, what? you did, did you put your head into a lawnmower? Is, is your face <laughs> alright? Okay, why, yeah, okay. why is your face a ham? I, I did not consider that. That's a good no. point. Thank you. What about the, uh, the CGI for his unveiling? Because I really like that. That's pretty neat. It was neat until you saw the actual snake, and then the snake kind of looked... Where does Moffat get these ideas, though? A snake uh, man. I know Mara? No, I mean, <laughs> where did you get this idea? A snake man entirely comprised of other smaller snakes. No, no, no. He, he, he I something. know. I know. There's been some Japanese stuff that's done. Snake man comprised of other snakes. I you're, know of a man comprised. You're telling me Moffat's a weeaboo now. <laughs> no, I'm saying. I'm saying it's not. I'm saying a it's a. I'm saying it's new to Doctor Who, but it's been done in other stuff. And and I just want to add that uh. A dodgy-looking snake? That's basically the Mara's first appearance. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love the fact, though, that when he curls up, you can see the fact that his face is made up of the coils of the snake, and that's what those weird scar-like things are. I thought are. they were scars. I thought they were scars. They're he, not he, scars. They're spaces. He played me. Coils, and that is just amazing. Nice. Although All I right. do wonder where the heck the eyes and mouth and nose come from. So are we, are we about to wrap up? I don't like think we can put this off any longer. That ending... Oh. Uh, can, oh. can, I, can I mention one? Can I mention one miscellaneous thing before the ending? Yes, please. Because it, it didn't really, it didn't really go anywhere. But there, there were a lot of classic Who jokes in this one and little references. But the one that made me chuckle the most was the mention of the three versions of Atlantis that the Doctor could be in. <laughs> well, I wonder <laughs> why. No, no, yeah, because th this is a reference to the fact that in classic Who they had three different accounts of how Atlantis sunk. Two in the Pertwee era and one in the Troughton era. Now, interestingly, the two Pertwee examples, the Demons and the Time Monster, both had the Roger and Elgato Master in it. But the Troughton one... <laughs> hey, Radiac, what's the Troughton story with Atlantis in it? Um, the Underwater Menace? <laughs> the Underwater Menace with the fish people of I'm convinced you're not trying to fit that into every review we ever do. No, 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 no. It's, it's even better, because the day after I saw it, I got an email from, like, the thing, the Underwater Menace is confirmed to come out on DVD next month. Oh, for God's sake. Moffat had to know that. He had to know. That's how he snuck that. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> All right, cliffhanger, then. As cliffhangers yeah. go, this is pretty damn big. Oh, oh yeah. Missy's dead, except she isn't. Well, Car is dead. Car is dead, so she probably isn't. isn't. And the TARDIS mm -hmm. has been destroyed. Yeah, Although it probably that's, isn't. That's the point at which it strains credibility for me, the TARDIS being destroyed. Missy getting blasted, I can sort of buy she'd regenerate. Clara getting blasted, it would suck, but Finally. I could understand the grim the grimness of it. The TARDIS being destroyed, yeah, that, that immediately sells it as, this is not happening, this is being undone. It's a bit hard to regenerate when you've got no body left. But did you notice how the position she was standing in? She made a little pose whenever it's she. It's not escaped my attention. No. 
It's the same hard. exact pose she did whenever she got shot by fucking the boyfriend in the uh, finale he last. Fucking the David boyfriend. Danny. What? Damn it. <laughs> and, and and y'all and y'all are completely wrong because it wasn't Danny who shot Missy in Death in Heaven. It was the oh, brick. It was, it was a brick. Cyber brick. Yeah, it was a cyber brick there. But she made the same pose. And she disappeared, yeah. like, yeah, you saw her, you know, skeleton this time, but she she kind of went away in white light like she did, you know. Yeah. More more, more interesting is what follows is that we cut back to little child Davros. Oh, good great. And the doctor shows up, and, and he's like, I'm from the future, and I'm here to save my friend. And then he pulls out a Dalek gun and yells, exterminate. <laughs> Which, which is pretty interesting because uh, I've been talking all about the dark mirrors, Missy and Clara and whatnot. Here, the doctor's finally getting darkened. Everything's wearing him down. He finally decides, I have that right. I have to save my friends. I have to and kill. And you guys have heard me say this a while. I'm tired of the doctor always winning. This oh, yeah. is a lose lose situation. He can't win. Either A, mm -hmm. he lets Davros live and everything that's been happening so far happens, or B, he kills. Davros and everything changes. No, there's an option well, C. There's an option C. Option C is he finds another way because this is Doctor Who. No, no, option C is, is actually right there in the scene. He doesn't have to shoot Davros. Mm -hmm. He can shoot That's the hand mines. Oh. And, oh. and that would still the timeline because. Huh? And but what if, if, what if the Doctor shooting the hand mine is what created Dra Davros into what he is now. Well, that could be it as well. Well, we don't know what's going to happen. And even if it does change it, what if it is just like a small thing? Like, he just feels that he owes the Doctor something. We'll find that next week. That we will. Uh, can I go to my one complaint now? Go I for it. Go for it. I feel like they probably could have put the whole first half of the episode with the planes and the you know, Clara and Mrs. Scene in the prologue. And they probably could have spliced the last 20 minutes with the next week episode for one whole episode. Because to me, this felt... While this was a great episode, this was a very solid episode. It felt very short to me. I, with with well, respect? I don't, I don't think I got that. But then again, I, my first watch was on space with commercials, so uh, it did feel a little longer for me. With respect, I'm going to completely disagree. I thought the pacing for this was pretty much spot on. It it ended so quickly. With complete respect for me, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> it is, it's just, it, it, he, they literally pull it out. Like, you know, whenever the Doctor finally came out and they started the main, like, me of the episode... Like, 15 minutes and then cliffhanger. I, well, I think, that, though, that... Well, your problem with that is considering... That is, you're considering everything that involves, like, from the Snake Man to the end, the actual episode, and thinking, oh, well, all this other stuff with Missy and Clara and whatnot, trying to find... No, I, I understand. Well, so all, one look, episode, just... look, you three know that I have complained about Moffat's lack of pacing in the past. Mm-hmm. This time, I can't complain about it because I just thought it was paced so brilliantly. And you say it's it could have been a one-parter. You say I it could have been a one-parter. If it was a one-parter, you wouldn't have the big cliffhanger with the Doctor shooting or not shooting Kid Davros. Mm -hmm. mm. One thing I do hope about the cliffhanger is we've had big monumental cliffhangers before. Uh, Journey's End, sorry, Stolen Earth comes to mind. That was At the time, that was huge. Oh, yeah. Because people even were speculating that maybe David Tennant was leaving secretly. I will say one thing in Kuchiri's favor. If they had not put that bit at the end with the trailer for the next episode where the Doctor might shoot or not, I think it would have taken just a little bit away. Because that is the part that we're getting all hung up on. Yeah. Uh, the speech at the end was great. But we're all getting a hup a hung up uh -huh. on the fact that the Doctor has this gun, he's saying exterminate, what the heck is he going to do with it? It would have been even more mind-boggling if they'd actually, when it came up to be continued, you'd heard it go off. Oh my god. Oh man, that would have killed us. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure there have been a bunch of classic cliffhangers. I remember in Caves of Androzani, the first cliffhanger with the Doctor and Perry around the firing squad, and you actually see the guns getting fired. Yeah. So I'm remembering an entirely different cliffhanger. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> oh, a literal no. cliffhanger. No. No. We yeah. do not 
<laughs> but the point I was trying to make, it was kind of interrupted, is we've had big monumental cliffhangers before, like at the end of The Star on Earth, where he's shot by a Dalek and he regenerates, and then two minutes into the next episode, it's resolved disappointingly. I hope we don't get that with this. I, 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 I think we're going to skip it. I, I think that whoever said about the uh, hand, shooting the hand mines is probably the resolution of that. That would be me, but it might not be. It might not be. I think in some way, no matter what Moffat does, somebody is going to be disappointed with it. Somebody. That's <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Why, why are you jumping on me for, huh? We're not jumping because on anybody. Because I think in the long run, run where we all know there's probably no way he's going to kill Davros for the simple fact that, you know, that would lead to a lot of problems. Finally, in the everything that Doctor Who has told us up to this point. I don't think he's going to kill a child, because this is not Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I mean, and also... So the real question massive, is, does he A, leave, or B, do something else? Yeah. The, the, the Doctor is not Littlefinger. I haven't watched Game of Thrones, because I haven't time to watch Game of Thrones, but from what I know, Littlefinger kills everybody in that series. I no, 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 you're wrong. George R. R. Martin kills everyone in that scene. <laughs> well said. Oh, is this well played. a new favorite character? Don't tell me. <laughs> it, oh, look, uh, you, you want to character. see this character go far in life and stuff it, like that? Oh, Fuck you, I'd be hitting her. Oh, look, you've, what you've got a happy ending. Oh, look, that? You've, got, you've got a new favorite. It would be shame if something happened to her. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's move on then, because uh, right at the end of the episode, after we're all still cutting our jaws off the floor from what we just watched, uh, it gets worse. With a 30-second nice. Next Time trailer. That doesn't really tell anything. But it was bloody cool. Oh, yeah. They I don't, don't show Clara or Missy, so they've actually learned their goddamn lesson at not showing the spoilers in the trailers. Well done, BBC. Yeah, there you go. But they show just enough to spark some intrigue. And what the hell is up with Devil's speech? Yeah. This is trickery, isn't it? This has to be some sort of showrunner trickery. Well, it's Moffat, so it's probably. Why is. would Davros present the Doctor with an opportunity to wipe the Daleks out of creation? Uh, because he wants to see how far he can break him. Yeah, it could be that. It and could, what, what, it could, it could also be exactly what Missy was doing as well with the whole uh, Cybermen thing, and then earlier on with. Uh, Ha have uh, uh, Prime Minister Master, whose name escapes me for the moment. Harold Help Saxon. Me, Fred, Harold Thank Saxon. You. Uh, with what he was doing with the whole thing. There's one very critical difference there. What's that? The Doctor and the Master are friends. The Doctor and Devros are arch enemies. There you go. <laughs> I'll I'll uh, rip his eyes out. Scratch his eye out, but yes, it's still it's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And the BBC, I, I've just praised them, but now I'm going to I'm going to damn them as well because uh, the day this episode aired, I was out. Thank goodness, I was out in uh, in town, uh -huh. so I missed this. They showed a 20 second trailer for The Witch's Familiar before they aired The Magician's Apprentice. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. What? And guess it gets it gets better. It gets better. The trailer shows Dev Ross, Scarro, and the Doctor holding the gun from the final shot. Oh my god. Everything is spoiled in that trailer and they showed it before the episode. That's really Uh-huh. So, I'm so glad I don't live in the UK. <laughs> Imagine how angry everybody who saw that was, though. Somebody's getting fired, let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Someone and, is so um, fired, they have... That's a bigger blunder than your, than your blunder of a... Uh... The trailer for Army of Ghosts showing an extermination. Oh, God. still, still sticks in my craw that. But thank goodness I was too stupid to realize that was a Dalek killing somebody. Same. <laughs> now that was a, a cliffhanger, but this is a cliffhanger. This is, I think, this is perhaps even bigger than that. But mm. well, we'll find out. Next well, I don't know so much. The, the sphere is not ours. It's one of my favorite cliffhangers of all time, actually. Uh -huh. It's it's good. It's really just good. the sheer shock factor of I heard nothing about these guys are coming back. Wait, what did he say? No, I I didn't even know that they could come back because I wasn't looking at Doctor Who on the internet at that time. So it's just like holy shit. And I know we should all guard against hype and hyperbole, but people are claiming that have seen this episode, the second episode, it's even better than this one. Well, God oh, that's I a hope... lot to live up to. <clears throat> I hope that's true. I hope but... that's true, because we could be in for a brilliant, brilliant two-parter. Well, if, if they continue on to with what the episode ended on, I mean... Yeah. 
Well, well, you, well. If they keep going at that pace, your your complaint about it not feeling complete will be probably be vindicated. If yeah, I just but I still, keep it I, up. I still complain about the first episode though. I might love the second episode, but I still. <laughs> oh, for, there's just no making you happy, is there, Gucci? <laughs> Can we just rewatch series thing. five? Can we just rewatch series five? I'm, no, I, I promise I'm not. No, a, you know, <laughs> denied. <laughs> Hey, I will say one thing about this episode. The one thing that disappointed me was the fact that it was the Daleks again, because yeah. I'm it was it's always the Daleks. I see where you're but coming, but I think they were redeemed. Davros totally blows it out of the park for me. I don't care. It's Daleks anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. With it now. Davros is more important. I had not realized how much I was missing Davros until he came back. Yeah. We need him back, and we've got him back. Thank goodness. Yeah, uh, I think that's it. Anyone got like overall they want to do, or should we just move on to the end? More uh, of this, Moffat. More of this, Moffat. Please, I'm begging you. Don't have a goddamn puzzle box at the end of yeah. the, the next episode. Just let this series be a really good series. You don't have to build up to anything. Fill it with emotional and morality conflict and all that other shit just just don't puzzle boxes with a mysterious person who's plotting to destroy the doctor and make us play guessing games for Tammy because we're too good at Fa fandom is too good at these guessing games Moffat they get it right in five seconds and you're just left going oh well actually either A the fandom's getting too good or B Moffat's getting worse yeah I, mm, nah, I'll go with the Moffat's getting worse I you would oh for I would <laughs> Because on the I one would. hand, Missy was kind of extremely obvious. Yeah. But, the but on the other hand, he did really well with this one where we had no idea about Hamface Guy and the kid. And Davros, yeah. That's, that's Unless you read yeah. the Daily Mirror, and why would you do that? <laughs> why would you do that now? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, Wouldn't I'm... that be amazing, though? Uh, we're so, going to get um... a sis layer from the Daily Mirror. Thank we you, are. guys. We are. So Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, Thank yeah. you for watching the last good. ever Doctor Who review, guys. Um... <laughs> but no, that would be a great idea to you know misdirect people. It's like, hey, these people have gotten it wrong every single time. Let's leak them something real, and then nobody will believe it. I think that's what happened. I think Moffat's that's what happened. Playing, playing anyway, I I don't want to speculate too much on the Witch's Familiar because I kind of don't want to spoil the episode for myself or anyone else that's listening to this right now. But I just uh, hope that the part two lives up to the expectation of part one. Same. Part one was set up. Part one was all killer, no filler. Let's have that again. Like, you we, have like, another chance, Moffat. Don't fuck it up. We, ha we had this with Dark Water. It was great, and it set up for something that was great. And, well, in my opinion, it stuck the landing. I can say that now that I'm not freaking the fuck out. <laughs> death in Heaven stuck the landing, and it was good, and it built on that Death in Heaven thing. So I'm hoping that which is familiar does the same thing. Yeah. Although I will say, it's kind of a bad thing to have something this good so early in the new season because then all the episodes that come after it have to be even better. And I'm not. Uh, yeah, well, I'm season possible. five started amazing though. Yeah. Like, I get, I get what you're saying. Series eight kind of started off on the, a wrong foot too. Like those first two or three episodes were a little shaky, and it wasn't really until listening. And then to we the had day. Forest. <laughs> a forest was at the end. Come it's on. It's not the worst yeah. episode of all time. <laughs> All right, I think uh, with Forrest we can stop now. Yeah, please get let's not get into that again and get her angry and, and, and have lessons about Why people. Yeah, so yeah, that was the mission. Yeah, I couldn't say it. That was the Magician's Apprentice. It was pretty bloody good. But yeah. what is the Magician's Apprentice? Uh, either Clara or the Doctor. Or Davros. No, I think Devros is the Magician. Possibly. The Doctor gets called a magician in this episode, so... He does, so the Apprentice could even be Boars, and it's just a bit of misdirection. Who Maybe knows? Davros is the Apprentice. I don't think it matters. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And, and now people are going to be yelling at me, of course it matters, it's, it's a title, what are you talking about? You call yourself a writer, Maybe shame on you. The Ronnie is the Apprentice. Oh, <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> We'll call it a night. Right. So thank you very much for Moffat listening to the. Apprentice. Thank you very, very much for listening to our review of the Mission's Apprentice. I hope we didn't anger you too much. About Kachira probably just made everybody quit the video. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back next week. Let's see if we have the fire Kachira for that outburst. 
<laughs> well, I oh, I, 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 just put it on my tab. Just put it on my tab. Okay, okay. You're forgiven for now. <laughs> and we'll be back next week to review The Witch is Familiar. And we hope it's as good as this one. So until then, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Pig fucker. <laughs> <laughs>